revenge. No, I want submission. I don't want to die. I can't die here. Fool. Did you think Molek Bal, the Lord of Domination, would so easily reward you? Hey guys, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, but I'm still Kira here with TGN and we are YouTube. So, you decided to follow in Anakin Skywalker's footsteps and join the dark side. Well, congratulations. You did what Luke couldn't and saved your left hand. Or, or was it his right? But enough with the Star Wars references. Today we're going to talk about a different dark side. The dark side of Skyrim. Starting off our line of Daedra is of course Azura. She is one of the first Daedra you'll receive a quest from. You can start her quest line by asking any innkeeper about rumors. You might grab a different quest or two at first. The game the beggar got himself kicked out of the Temple of Debella. Caused quite the ruckus. But eventually, he'll start talking about Dark Elves who built the Shrine of Azura after escaping Morrowind, and mark it on your map. It's just a short horse ride away from Winterhold, so be sure to take a carriage there if you're not already in the area. Once there, follow your quest marker south of Winterhold to the peak of a mountain, and climb the steps to Azura's Shrine. As you can see, shrines in Oblivion are small and pathetic in comparison to ones in Skyrim. Seems like everything got a little better in the newest Elder Scrolls game. They must have modeled Azura's shrine after the Palace of Vivek in Morrowind, because it will literally feel like years of climbing before you get to the top. Damn Dark Elf architecture. Speak to the Dunmer woman at the top who will explain Azura has been expecting you, and automatically start the quest, the Black Star. Easy enough. The quest rewards for Azura should be self-explanatory, either Azura's star or the Black Star. Your choice. Your next Daedric Prince is actually more of a princess, although no easy task unlike Azura. I actually glitched Boethia's quest along with many others by finding her shrine first by accident. Turns out you have to wait until a cultist of Boethia attacks you and then read the book they drop. Then, when you arrive at her shrine, there should be cultists fighting in which you can slaughter them all or talk to the Dark Elf leader. The next part may be hard for those who are short on coin, in which you can watch my video on Easy Money to help sort that problem out. Go to any of the major cities and hire a mercenary. Mine cost a good 500 gold and was a real witch. After they've become your companion, fast travel back to Boethia's shrine and command them to use the sacrificial altar. You can do this by talking to them, asking them to do something for you, and then selecting the pole thingy that lights up. Luckily, the IQ requirement for being a hired hand is pretty low, and they'll gladly magnetize themselves to the weird glowy stick to be sacrificed. Once you've done the deed and grabbed back your 500 coins, Boethia will use your ex-companion's body to speak with you. The reward from her quest is a nice piece of ebony mail, and let me tell you, it's pretty badass. Your next quest is a little less bloody, as you start off by searching for a dog the blacksmith of Falkreath wants as a pet. Upon entering Falkreath for the first time, a guard should ask you if you've seen any dogs on the road. After a bit of dialogue, he will point you in the direction of the blacksmith, who's been wanting a furry friend to keep him company around the forge. After speaking with the blacksmith, head down the road from Falkreath and you should come upon the cutest little puppy you've ever seen. And he talks! Yeah, Skyrim is now host to giant flying lizards and two-legged cat men. And you're surprised by me? Yeah, I just talked, and I'm continuing to do so. This poor little puppy is actually Barbus, the dog you normally see standing next to Clavica's Vile, and it seems Vile kicked him out of their little Daedric flat or something. Of course, you can't say no to Barbus's puppy eyes, so start following him to the nearby Daedric Shrine. Yes, you seriously have to follow him, the whole way there. You can't fast travel, you can't run ahead and leave him, you have to follow him, and follow him. And eventually, arriving at the shame, you'll be met by a coven of vampires. Have yourself a bloodbath of these twilight freaks, and continue on to the shrine of Clavicus Vile, who will explain the rest. Rewards from this quest can either be the Mask of Clavicus Vile, or the Rufal Axe, well, no, no, just the Mask. There's no way you'd actually choose to kill that poor puppy in the end for the axe, right? So in case you're like me, and completely shrugged off the main questline, well, you're going to have to go back and do it for Hermaeus Mora. 
After speaking with the dragon at the throat of the world and being sent off to grab an Elder Scroll to go back in time... Oops. Is it too late to say spoiler alert? <laughs> well, you'll meet a man named Sigmus down the line, and after grabbing the Elder Scroll from inside the Dweamer Ruin, be sure to take back the cube thingy that sits nearby and return it to him. He'll start freaking out about how happy he is in his crazy words. Did I forget to mention that he's insane? And then thank you. As you're heading out, a dark void will block your path. The dark void is actually the voice of Hermaeus Mora, who explains Sigmus in, is his emissary, but has almost exhausted his usefulness in which he will need a replacement. You. This begins the quest line that ends with the reward of Ogma Maha Infinium, which is a book. Woo, I always needed one of them. Now, the next Daedric Prince would have been her scene, but I've already given a full walkthrough to his quest in my video, Werewolves Part 2. Be sure to check it out if you want to know how to gain this hunter's favor for a savior's hide or ring of her scene. So, skipping over her scene, we have our one and only Prince of Destruction. You should remember Maroon's Dagon from Oblivion. He was the big red demon guy who was trying to end the world and instead got himself a big dragon to the face. Hoorah! His quest actually begins in Dawnstar with a man who decided to open a museum dedicated to the mythic Dawn. During your next visit to Dawnstar, you should be stopped by a courier who hands you an invitation to the museum. Reading the invitation should place a quest marker on your map that will lead you straight to the door of the mythic Dawn fanatic himself. Follow him inside, browse the galleries, and then speak to him when you're ready to serve the Prince of Destruction. This, the reward you get from this quest is none other than Maroon's Razor, which has made a comeback from Oblivion as well. While you're meandering through the streets of Markath, you might notice the robed man who keeps stopping people on the street. I'm with the Vigil of Stendar. We believe this house might have been used for Daedra worship, evil rites and so forth. Approach him and offer him your aid to have him lead you into the abandoned house behind him. Upon entrance, you will notice nothing strange about the house besides the fact that it doesn't seem abandoned at all. But delve a bit deeper and try opening one of the locked doors will cause the Vigilant of Stindar to panic, saying you have to leave immediately. As you speed towards the exit, things will begin to shake before throwing themselves across the room, like, like something out of a nightmare you had years ago before the ghostly voice begins to echo throughout the room. Kill or you will die. So begins the quest of Molag Ball, which rewards you with the one and only Mace of Molag Ball. It seems like Markath has no end to its Daedra worship problems. As you head in the direction of the Underkeep, you'll notice a priest fighting with a Nord who is yelling something about, You better not have defiled my ancestors. I, I have no idea why that Nord was country. Um, but if you speak to the priest afterwards and pry a bit into the situation, he should tell you that it looks like some kind of animal has been eating the remains of the dead. Gross! Tell him you'll help, and he'll give you the key to the nearby Hall of the Dead. Enter inside to have a different ghostly voice, this one female, speak to you as you search the halls. Not many would walk blindly into a crypt, smelling of steel and blood, but not fear. Find the Necro Cannibal to start your new flesh-eating path as one of Namira's servants. This next quest is pretty simple, as was Azura's. Find one of the worshippers of Purite at his shrine to be sent on a quest of true epicness. Seek out and return... Are you, are you ready for it? A death bell flower, a flawless ruby, a silver ingot, and some vampire dust. Wait, wait, it would, it would seem... You're simply doing the worshippers grocery shopping, but I promise you, it, it's all for a good cause, right? Deathbell flowers grow around the swamp where you were taken to the Dark Brotherhood initiation, or around any of their sanctuaries. Silver ingots can be found in a nearby village along with mines to get a chance at grabbing a flawless ruby while mining. Just don't forget your mining pick. And, if you've already completed Clavicus Vile's questline, you should be loaded up on Vampire Dust. Bring these items back to the Shrine of Purite to have the Worshipper brew up a potion to allow you speak with this elusive Daedric Prince. The reward from this shrine is Spellbreaker. For those of you who cried as I did at the death of our beloved Shea Gorath in the Shivering Isles expansion pack, You'll be thoroughly thrilled to know that the Prince of Madness has returned to Skyrim inside an insane dead king's mind. 
Don't worry if you're already confused. It will all make sense in the end. Or maybe it won't. You can start this quest of insanity by speaking to the male beggar in solitude, who is wandering the streets near the Blue Palace. He'll sadly explain that his master is on vacation, and he hasn't been able to talk to him in a while. Tell him you'll fetch his master from vacation, and he will be overjoyed. He'll even give you a hip bone to help you get inside. It seems no one sees the master without the dead ruler's hip bone. <laughs> Obviously. You can enter the Blue Palace at this point and start questioning the staff on how to get into the Pelagius wing of the palace. Eventually, you'll stumble upon a servant who will give you the key with warnings that the wing is haunted. Follow your quest marker to the haunted wing and open the door to reveal nothing but a dusty, poorly cared for wing of the Blue Palace. Continue down the hall until, whoosh, you're completely disrobed and flung straight into the mind of a dead and very insane ruler. Damn, hip bone. Welcome to the mind of King Pelagius, and so starts your quest for the Prince of Madness. From escaping the dead king's mind and pleasing Sheagorath, you will receive Wabajack. On to the darker side of the dark side of Skyrim, you have Vermina. Travel to Dawnstar and listen in to some of the townspeople. But everyone having the same bad dream every night. It's a curse, I say. I hear there's a priest of Mara visiting the inn. Maybe the divines will cure us. If you speak to some of them, they should complain about being tired due to all the nightmares that have been plaguing the town. Eventually, one of them will point you in the direction of the inn where a priest of Mara seeks to find an end to their suffering. Find him inside and tell him you'll offer him your aid to help out the town get some better rest. He will then eagerly lead you to a tower that rests overlooking the town. Follow him inside to begin your quest for Vermina and reward you with the Skull of Corruption. For time's sake, I couldn't cover every Daedra in Skyrim, but keep watching at the end of this video for a sneak peek of the next entering Skyrim and what Daedra I missed. I would like to thank PyroZoo and All Powers Rise for submitting this video idea on my channel. Be sure to subscribe to Ember Marketing and TGN if you like the entering Skyrim series, and I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving and a happy holidays.